So, after processing the liquid food, it is required to be packaged. There we have seen in the last step that liquid food or uh, liquid uh, rather liquid milk is processed and then it is packaged right. So, in this dairy and food process and product technology in our 40th class let us do the packaging of the processed milk right. So, if we do that packaging of the processed milk let us look into first that packaging system. Now, depending on whether your packaging system obviously, uh, can be of many types depending on what is your product right. Depending on what is your product that will dictate what type of packaging will be suitable for you right. So, one of the most convenient thing was in earlier days nowadays it is it is again it is again uh, uh, not so much in the market, but again gradually it will come up because of the uh, bad use or misuse of the plastic materials and and how the it is spoiling the mother art. So, that uh, someday it will become mandatory to come back to this earlier process or old process right, where the packaging units were with the help of returnable packaging material right, returnable or reusable packaging material. So, this reusable packaging material primarily was or is rather is the glass containers right. So, in I do not know how many of you at your age how many of you have seen glass containers where milk is being supplied, but yes in our early days when we were at your age we have seen a lot of such milk used to come and uh, it was it was mandatory that without spoiling the glass container you have to return if you if you are damaging the glass container then you are supposed to pay some fine or the price of the bottle or things like that. So, that there was a mandatory uh, deposition of the of the price of the money. So, that if there is any any damage that can be taken care of right, but nowadays many other things have come up for which the use of this kind of glass material. Glass material yes handling is very difficult because all the time you have to take care whether there is number one if gets broken then all the milk is coming down right to the container where it through which you are taking or the place where you were the thing has happened or the glass that has to be thrown out. So, all these this is a hassle, this is hazard definitely, but this hazard was counteracted by many subsequent developments, but again the cycle is like that again it, it will some or other day it will come back because of the use of the plastics in many ways and that is not desirable right. However, since we have taken it to be the packaging right. So, let us take it to the way that first returnable containers right. First it is returnable containers right. It is concerned the concerning factor is using returnable containers are that collection of the empty containers, washing of the empty containers prior to filling and it which necessitates the intermediate storage facility, because it is not that 1 to 10 hundreds number of bottles you are handling, it is several thousands to lakhs number of bottles you are handling. So, before it is being filled 
they are to be kept somewhere. So, you need that place and after filling you need somewhere where it has to be kept right and that too it is not possible that uh, you you fill it up now and then you uh, send it to the uh, supplier or send it to the consumer may, may not be possible. So, some intermediate space where they are to be kept the filled one unfilled one also and then they this require lot of space lot of lot lot of design for the packaging system right. So, one such let us handle it here that the reception of the empty bottles you have made. So, after that it goes to the washing and may be directly it is or may be if washing is already filled up you have to store it the unwashed empty bottles right and this unwashed empty bottles it is to and fro that is if it is not going directly to the washing it may go to the this storage place and when it where it is required or possible it will come back for washing. So, after washing again it may directly go for filling if it is possible otherwise it will go to the again some storage place where your that washed cans or washed bottles or washed container is being stored. Then after filling it may go to the storage of fluid containers the storage of rather filled containers that could be another space for storage or it can go to the distribution right. So, this is one way how we can use the returnable containers. Now, it will look into the design of this how the containers are ok. Before that some more uh, items we let us discuss that the bottle washing filling capping machines should be of matching capacity because all of them your bottle washing if it is 10,000 liters if your filling is 20,000 liters and if your capping is 5,000 liters then your your what is the rate determining number 5,000 because 5,000 capping maximum you can do. So, that is not desirable. What is desirable? That all these processes that is bottling, filling or washing or capping all of them are having the same rate right. So, capacity is same that you have to first ensure. Otherwise, it has to be highly labor intensive and the operation will require decreting or cutting means you can you have to fill it in crates or take out from the crates that is also highly labor intensive. And it may take unstacking and stacking uh, requirement also would have to be re, uh, repeated unnecessarily right. So, these are to be avoided if the capacities are not matching then this additional hazard additional additional your uh, uh, inputs additional expenses may be required for handling this mismatch uh, by the by the laborers. So, that is not desirable. Now, pasteurized milk bottles if we take them then bottles with wide necks. So, first reusable one or returnable one is pasteurized milk bottles where bottles with wide necks around 36 to 40 millimeters in, in, in diameter. So, that is used suitable for sealing with aluminum foil that is also is required foil caps made in 
C 2 this capture also done in C 2 from reeled strip by aluminum foils from the most common system for packaging of and this form the most common system for packaging of pasteurized milk right. So, bottles with wide necks of 36 to 40 millimeter this is suitable for sealing with aluminum caps made in C 2 and the uh, this is formed from the reeled strip that is continuous strip is there in real form and all these form the most common system for packaging of pasteurized milk and in uh, this is called returnable containers right. The bottles are placed into crates formerly made of galvanized steel wires or strips and nowadays usually of plastic. The crates have internal divisions, so that the bottles are not in contact with one another to minimize risk, because if this kind of crates are not there, then the bottle which you will keep if they are side by side without any difference then there may be this bottles will come across and they may they may be damaged because of the presence of the proximity right so they are designed to interlock uh, this 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 crates are uh, made in such a way that minimum risk is there for breakage and uh, these crates are designed in such a way that interlocking facility interlocking can be done so that uh, stable stack can be built right if it is one one crate so next crate may come over it and for another and uh, then like that it is it is interlocking right so that it just fix on the one over the other right then then we come to this the dimensions of dimensions of glass bottles crates and stacks of pasteurized milk how say this is the bottle which is having uh, this is one a is this height b is this diameter and c is this diameter right so the height could be depending on half liter or 1 liter capacity 200 to 67 or this neck could be 36 to 40 or 36 to 40 both for both half or 1 liter and c that is this is for half liter 73 for 1 liter 89 in diameter in millimeter where weight in gram is 418 for half liter and 610 for 1 liter right. And then these are the crates right where you are putting your bottles like this right and these bottles are crates are here a that is the height and B, C is this and B is this dimension. So, A is 270 that is height I for half liter or 330 for 1 liter, B is the other two sides is 430 and 350 or 505 and 320 and you can accumulate around 20 numbers for half liter or 15 numbers in 1 liter then you get the stack which could be either 6 high that means you can put 6 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 such crates 6 high which has a 1545 millimeter height or 5 high which has a 1590 millimeter high that is for 1 liter and this is for half liters 
right this is a this is a uh, dimensional distribution for bottles crates in the for pasteurized milk right so after this let us look into that the floor area which is required that we have seen from the previous one the floor area which is seen is that here right floor area from b and c right from b and c uh, this is the stack floor area right from b and c we oh sorry we see that that you if you multiply this with this it will come somewhere 0.15 right if you multiply this with that in the area required you will come somewhere that 0.15 right so floor area occupied floor area occupied by one stack of crate is around 0.15 and equivalent to a milk storage capacity of around 400 to 470 liters per meter square depending on bottle capacity and the stack height that is whether it is 5 high or 6 high depending on that also. The initial cost of a glass bottle prevents single service use for pasteurized milk because glass bottle containers you have to pay for the glass bottle right. So, lot of investment. So, if you have 100,000 liters of milk to be supplied. So, lot of bottles you have to initially buy. So, that is highly cost requirement. So, that is a bottleneck for pasteurized milk to serve. The effective cost dependence on the number of times the bottle can be reused. Obviously, if you buy today for first time and if you can renew it for 20 times or 10 times, how many times you can reuse? Some may get broken by the first uh, uh, supply, some may get broken. So, that part may be 5 10 percent is there to be replenished, but but in general on an average if your number of returnable cycles could be 10, 20, 30, 50 depending on how the more you can reuse the more is your profit or less is your chance uh, risk factor right. So, that you be, uh, uh, will give you back or pay you back that investment which you have made initially. So, initially high quantity high cost is required for buying the um, both uh, your bottles and the crates right. So, this if it is reused that will dictate whether it will be primarily by the effectiveness of the bottle recovery system and ability of the bottle to withstand breakage. So, all these whether it is reusable, returnable, returned or reused or if it is uh, how much resistant to break, breakage rather. So, depending on all these the performance will also depend on that right. Then let us go into the other sterilized milk in bottles right sterilized milk in bottles. So, where milk is in bottles and it is sterilized right. So, bottles used in uh, used for in bottle milk sterilization have narrow necks around 26 millimeter earlier it was a bigger neck right. So, now it will be much narrow sorry much narrow such that you or this coverage can be easily made. 
uh, so that no pilferage. Pilferage if that is there, that is not desirable, right? So now, so that a more effective seal can be made and pre, uh, uh, and and uh, prefabricated crown seals are used to seal the bottles. These bottles, these bottles must be able to withstand not only mechanical shocks during handling, but also thermal shocks during sterilization. Right? You have taken a bottle. So, it should have both mechanical strength as well as the stability towards the thermal treatment, because you are doing in bottle sterilization. That means, in the bottle you are putting milk first and then you are sterilizing and you know for sterilization the time and temperature this combination is very high and for that if the bottles are not either mechanically stable or e heat stable then your loss is again there your problem again started that is why it is required. Even more during cooling also that after heating while well cooling if there is crack then you are done for. So, during cooling both heating and cooling it should be stable thermally stable as the milk in the bottle is heated and expands during heating more than the bottle the air above the milk becomes compressed and the pressure inside the bottle exceeds the external pressure. The con con contraction of the milk as it cools below the filling temperature results in a vacuum in the space above the milk. This vacuum may encourage contamination rather may encourage contamination through the seal between the bottle and the cap. So, that is the danger that you have already created some vacuum inside your bottle. So, from outside it is always there is a possibility that there will be some invasion because your inside pressure is low, outside pressure is more. So, there will be always a natural tendency from outside to inside invasion and the moment some fresh air is going in. So, that will automatically bring some organisms to the bottle, but that is not desirable. right? So, it is always therefore, important that the seals be fully airtight. Right? So, unless your seal is airtight, you cannot do such kind of things. So, this is a bottle like that dimensions and weight of the glass bottles for sterilized milk that is in bottle sterilization. So, for half and one liter bottles, so we have this cap size and we have our neck size, this is the height, this is the diameter. So, 75 diameter 26 uh, your cap and 232 centimeter millimeter your uh, height. So, this is uh, for 1 liter 294 uh, millimeter whereas, your B and C are 2675 and 2689 depending on whether it is half a liter or 1 liter and weight is around 460 to 735 may not be double but somewhere close to that. right? So, if this is there in bottle, then we can say the other things are pasteurized milk, where the aluminum milk can and uh, aluminum milk can has proved very satisfactory in service and since the beginning of the second half of the last century, this has rapidly replace the previously used tinned meal mild steel can. Though in our country even now if you go to many dairies you will see those kind of mild uh, steel and tinned uh, containers are still being used right though it is not advisable. In recent years high density polyethylene cans began to be introduced in a number of countries, but have not proved popular 
for various reasons, may be price, may be breakable breakages, etcetera. The most common are cans with leads which do not require rubber gaskets and adequate seal being achieved with sunken grip or mushroom leads. Because of mechanical washing problems, leads attached to the cans by chains are no longer used. So, leads which are attached to the cans then so that the lost is minimized. So, that is also not desirable because during washing or handling it is very difficult. Through simple arrangement at the lead ring, lead or other seals can be applied to. So, through simple arrangements at the lead, ring lead or other seals can be applied to make the contents of the cap or can pill for proof. Right? Then, we come to the last that is Okay, this is let us uh, make it very quickly. The cans may be uh, palletized, but more often floor conveyors are used. Full cans uh, stored in one layer, thus allowing about 320 to 360 liters of milk to be stored per square meter, ex uh, excluding excess space. Empty cans after washing are stacked in layers horizontally up to the height of 1.5 meter for strong and moving washing em washed empty cans, simple trolleys on which the cans can be stored in 4 to 5 layers are very useful. For instance, about 20 cans each of 40 liters capacity can be stored on trolleys about 1700 by 700 millimeter in size with a supporting frame made of half inch pipe. Right? So, now this is how it looks like this cans. Right? Now, if we look the last one that is single service containers and in this single service containers the common feature of the single service containers is that after emptying they are discarded. This fact has a significant impact on the milk plant construction, organization and on the economics of the whole enterprise. There is no collection and washing of the milk package, only crates are collected and washed, but even they may be replaced by single service delivery wraps, trays or boxes. Palletization may be applied as in the case of returnable containers, intermediate storage of packaging material and fill packages is required and this is this must be provided in plant. Right. So, if we look at further that single single service container we, this looks like that. So, they may have one where gavel tap is there, where there is flat top and another tetrahedral packs. Right? So, these are the two basic type single service containers are there, one is uh, cartons and other is plastic sachets. Cartons look like this and let us look into the plastic sachet that looks like this dimensions of the cartons creates okay, cartons how they are being uh, how they are being kept. So, this is like that right uh, how the dimensions in millimeter of cartons creates and stacks for pasteurized milk like that it is being kept and the other one is the sachet and UST cartons ok it could be like this and and uh, Pasteurized milk in sachet that is a pillow shaped that is a pillow shaped one which is like this pillow shaped one and like this they are put in the crates. So, these are the dimensions right and uh, they look like this and they are kept in the in the in the in the crates like this ok. They can be returnable they uh, they are not return required to be returned. So, they are throw use and throw type 
and this use and throw type ones are um, nowadays very popular because you don't have to consider the uh, storage and other things right so this is what our time is up so up to packaging we have finished after 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 uh, the liquid milk uh, processing we have packaged and then allowed it to dispatch okay thank you